let's say we're staying on a hill of some mountain, and the heat of this hill can be found using the function f of x and y, which is going to tell us the heat of the mountain for every point x and y. Previously, we wanted to know if I move in this direction, in this direction of the vector u with the components a and b, how fast the surface of the mountain is going to change, right? So what is the rate of change of the surface of this mountain? In order to find this, we use the directional derivative. So if we would like to understand uh, what is the rate of change of the function at this point x0, y0, in the direction of some unit vector u, we need to use this formula. So we need to multiply the partial derivative of the surface at the direction x to the a component of the vector u plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to the y multiplied to the second component of this vector u. So I looked at this operation and I see that I, it is possible to write down this operation as a dot product of the two vectors. So where the first vector is going to have the components fx and fy and the second vector is going to have the components a and b, basically the components of the vector u. So the first vector in this dot product occurs not only in the computing directional derivatives, but also in many other contexts as well. It has so many applications geometrically and algebraically, so we decided to give him a special name, and we're going to call this as a gradient vector. And we are going to denote this with a special symbol, which is reverse delta, and, and, and this is Greek nabla, and we usually read this as the gradient of f or a grad of f or del f. The gradient vector of the function f is defined as a vector with the two components where the first component is going to be the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x and the second component is going to be the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y. Let's do an example of the directional derivatives using the gradient and then we'll come back to the meaning of this factor. So let's say we're given a function with this equation when it defined the directional derivative of this function in the direction of some vector v at some point t and minus 1. So the directional derivative of the f in the direction of the v is going to be the dot product of the gradient vector at this point t and minus 1 multiplied as a dot product to the vector u, which is going to be the unit vector in the direction of the v. So when we derive this unit vector u, we need to divide the vector v to its norm. It's going to be a vector with the same direction as the v, but which has a length to be equal to the 1. In order to do this, so we have the vector v with the components t and 5, and we need to divide this to its norm. It's going to be 4 plus 25, or basically 1 or square root of 29 multiplied to, to the vector t and 5. So now what I need to do is I, I need to find the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x. It's going to be t x y cube. And I need to evaluate this at the point t and minus 1. Basically, I need to substitute x with the t and y with the minus 1. It's going to be t multiplied to the t multiplied to the minus 1 in a cube. It's going to be minus 4. And now we need to find the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y. It is going to be 3x square y square minus 4. And again, we need to evaluate this at the t and minus 1. So I need to substitute x to be equal to the t. It's going to be 3 multiplied to the 4. And instead of y, I need to put minus 1. Minus 1 in the square is going to be 1 minus 4. This is going to be 8. Right? So the gradient vector of this function at the point t and minus 1. It's going to have two components and they are minus 4 and 8. So if I substitute them to the formula, so this is going to be minus 4 and 8 multiplied as a dot product is a 1 divided to the square root of 29 to the t and 5. So when we multiply the t vectors as a dot product, so this constant can be taken out to here. And the dot product of these two vectors is going to be minus 8 plus 40. It's going to be set it t, or basically set it t divided to the square root of 29. You see, so when we calculate the directional derivative of the function 
f in the direction of some unit vector u, it is going to be some number. And this number tells us how fast the surface is changing in this direction. Basically, it's going to tell us the rate of change of the surface in that direction. And this is going to be a number. If this number is bigger, it means that the surface is changing in the direction faster. And if this number is smaller, then it tells us that the surface is changing in that direction lower. So let's go back to our figure here. And I'm staying here, and I can put one step to many directions, right? I can go in the direction of this vector u. I can go to the right, to the down, to many other directions as well. So what I would like to understand, or what I would like to know, is what is the, at which direction the surface has the maximum rate of change. So at which direction the surface is going to have the fastest change, and what is the value of this maximum rate of change. So this is the two questions which I would like to an answer, and it B is the gradient vector which we have defined it is going to answer these questions. Let us try to write down the directional derivative. So, the re so let we are given some function f, right, which depends on the x and y, was a gradient vector, and I can find the directional derivative of the f in, in the direction of some vector u using the dot product of the gradient vector to the u vector, right? And what I would like to do is I would like to find the direction at which this directional derivative, which is a constant, right? So directional derivative of the f in the direction of the u at some point a, at some point is a constant. And what I would like to know is at which direction u, so this directional derivative is going to have the maximum value. So I would like to maximize this directional derivative with respect to the all vectors u, where the norm of the all the vectors u are going to be equal to the 1, right? So Because it is important for me the direction of these vectors. So now, when I write down this as a dot product, when the dot product is going to have the maximum value. So do you remember we, we wrote down the formula for the dot product was the angle, was the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. We said that this is going to be the norm of the f, the norm of the first vector, multiplied to the norm of the second vector, multiplied to the cosine of the angle between them, right? And this value is going to be a maximum for the vector, which is going to have the maximum cosine of alpha, right? And the cosine of alpha is maximum at the zero angle, when the two vectors are parallel. So what does it mean? So if I'm, if I'm interested to know at which direction the surface has the maximum rate of change, it appears it should be, this, this direction here should be parallel to the, to the vector f. And please note that the length of the u should be normal, right? So I can construct the u, so since it should be parallel to the f, but with the length 1. So this is the, so let's say geometrically, this is going to be a vector f. This is going to be a vector gradient of f, right? And my vector u should be parallel there. It should be some vector u, which is going to be parallel with the length 1. And in order to obtain this, I can just take this u as a gradient of f, right? And normalize it so that it's going to be a vector with the length 1. So this is going to be this kind of vector, right? And it appears the maximum rate of change so the direction at which the surface has the maximum rate of change is actually the direction of the gradient vector at this point. So the direction at which the surface has the maximum rate of change is the direction of the gradient vector, but normalized, right? Okay, and the second question was, what is actually the value of this maximum rate of change? In order to do this, so we need to write down the directional derivative again. So directional derivative of the surface in the direction of this vector u has the maximum rate of change in the direction of the gradient vector, right? So I need to write down the gradient vector dot product is a u, and this is going to be a maximum when the u is equal to this value, when the u has a direction of the gradient vector. So let me write this, the gradient vector f dot product is a gradient vector f divided to the norm of the gradient vector f, and I can write down this dot product 
is the norm of the gradient vector f in the square divided to the gradient vector f in its norm. So I can cancel out the square with this one, and this is going to be the gradient vector of f. It appears the maximum rate of change of the function is just the norm of this gradient vector at this point. The gradient vector is like so interesting. It is, it is going to tell us at which direction we need to move so, so that the surface is going to change the fastest. And its norm tells us how fast the surface is changing in that direction. So let's do an example. So we are given a function as x is equal to x multiplied. We are given a function x multiplied to the e in the power of y. And we would like to find the rate of change. So we would like to find the direction at which the surface the function is going to have the maximum rate of change in the value of this maximum rate of change. First problem is, first of all, we need to find the gradient vector f. This is going to be the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x in y. So if I find the partial derivative of the f with respect to the x, it's going to be e in the power of y. If I find this with respect to the y, it's going to be x e in the power of y. So if I value this at the point t and 0, this is going to be e in the power of 0, 2 multiplied as e in the power of 0, this is going to be 1 and 2. The direction at which the function has the maximum rate of change is this direction, but I need to normalize this so that it's going to be, it's going to have the length to be equal to the 1. So 1, 2, divided to the norm of this vector, which is 1 in the square plus 2 in the square, it's going to be a 1 over square root of 5 multiplied as a 1 and 2. It's a direction at which the function has the maximum rate of change. And the value of the maximum rate of change, it's the norm of the gradient of the function at this point, 1 and 2. And this is going to be square root of 5.